Hello, I'm Mr. Schlichting. I'm Mr. Annis. And we're the orchestra and band teachers here at Olympic View Elementary School. We want to talk to you about a few things. First of all, this is your fifth grade year, and here in our district, we start students on the band and the orchestra instruments. And it's such a great opportunity for you guys because you're going to be able to play those instruments all throughout middle school and all throughout high school. And it's going to be a great time for you guys to really shine artistically outside of our math, English, literature curriculum we have here. One of the things I love about um, teaching uh, elementary and beginning band and, and for orchestra as well is getting to talk to parents. And um, I'm always surprised at how many parents played an instrument or started on an instrument. Um, and so this is just, this is where music begins. Um, when we start our class sessions, um, we'll start on September 28th, or the week of September 28th. And the way that we're going to do things in band is we'll have the flutes at 2 o'clock, clarinets at 2.30 on Monday and Wednesday. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll have trumpets meeting at 2 o'clock and trombones at 2.30. So we'll be doing those four instruments this year for band. Um, but our means, at least for, for starters, will be entirely on Zoom and having just those, um, those instruments together will be really helpful so that um, I can really fine tune our time together. Um, so once again, we'll be divided by our instrument families um, for that first, for the, at least while we're online anyway. Go ahead. So I was gonna say, uh, likewise with orchestra, make sure we'll be performing our instruments every day from two to three. Uh, right now, the format I'm planning is to have my violins and the violas, my chin instruments as we call them, on Mondays and Wednesdays and our cellos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that's mainly just to focus on individual technique on those particular instruments, just like the band. The format may change as the year continues on, but for right now, I think this is a good starting point for us. I wanna to talk to you guys about the rental opportunities. I know many of you, in fact, I think most of you guys probably don't have an instrument at home that you want to be able to play on. So uh, typically we would have, uh, have students measuring for their instruments and uh, I'd be telling them uh, where they should go to pick up such instruments. We're gonna hand, or not hand, we're gonna email you the information about uh, great places to rent. Off the top of my head, we've got Music and Arts in town for band and orchestra, Music 6000 in town, uh, there's Yenny's, and likewise, on the orchestra side specific, we've got um, RL Ray in downtown Olympia. All great places to go to grab an instrument in the local area, not too far away. Uh, because I won't be able to adjust for uh, instruments, uh, I would uh, strongly ask that you physically go to those places and they will help you with the setup for uh, violin, viola, or cello, whatever the instrument is you're interested in. And last thing I wanted to say is there is also, uh, there are also district instruments available. Um, not very many, uh, but I would highly recommend you uh, first focus on rentals before uh, looking at the district instruments available. Uh, and lastly, I have to say about the rentals is I have a lot of students that end up purchasing a violin and you're eventually gonna grow out of that instrument. And I, I would just say it's gonna be, it's gonna seem like a little bit of money up front to rent it per month versus purchasing it. But in the long run, you'll be able to update your instrument as you continue on. And it's actually kind of a cool way uh, for parents to incentivize students to continue on through middle school and high school. On the band side, a lot of what Mr. Schlichting said was, is, is true for us as well. Um, we're just doing the four instruments this year, so flute, clarinet, trumpet, and trombone, at least while we're distance learning. Um, those, we've picked out the four instruments um, that are really best suited for transferring to other instruments later on. So, um, for example, if your student wanted to play saxophone, uh, clarinet's a great place to start. Um, if you wanted to play French horn or baritone or tuba, um, you know, trumpet or trombone would be great options uh, for those students as well. Um, when it comes to rentals, um, Music and Arts is a great one, like Mr. Schlichting said. Um, music 6000 is a good option. Um, uh, Ted Brown is, is uh, I think, in Tacoma, um, and there's, there's options there. And a great way to do this is to just go online to music stores and see who does rentals. At this time of year, there's a lot of students who are renting, and so uh, it's good to just check what they have in stock. Typically, uh, Mr. Schlichting will measure students for orchestra for band 
I like to have students play test, and that is just to try some different mouthpieces from different instruments and see what they're just kind of naturally fit, um, that, that fit them well. Um, because we're not able to do that in person this year, I would recommend if you go into a music store, which I think you should, is see if you can play test a couple instruments and just see what your student uh, naturally plays better. And, and really, in the end, um, we, it doesn't matter to us what your students choose. We'll teach your student no matter what. Um, but um, it's up to you and your student what you decide to play. If you have an instrument in the family, that might be what your student wants to play. Um, and that's obviously a great option if you can make that work. Um, so, but we'll support whatever your students want to play. Though in our Zoom classes this year, uh, it's the violin, viola, and cello for orchestra, and for my classes for band, it'll be flute, clarinet, trumpet, and trombone. Um, so we also want you to be aware of what this commitment is like for, for families. Um, this is a great, I think of this as a journey, um, and I, I think of my band program as the year one of an eight-year journey that takes them through middle school and through high school, and then maybe beyond eight years, um, if they go off to university or to a college or even a con music conservatory. Um, but for most musicians, it starts here. It starts now. And so um, we're really excited about this. Um, but we also want you to be aware of what the commitment is. Uh, most instruments, you purchase the instrument, but you know there are some other uh, costs with them. For example, uh, clarinets will need reeds purchased every so often. Um, string players will need you know rosin every so often. And... Um, you know, sometimes things, you know, break, a chin rest breaks or, a, um, you know, something needs to be repaired. That's part of the normal cost. So, I mean, there is a cost, but um, we also find that that is so worth it for students to be, you know, to get into music. And it becomes a lot, you know, a lifelong passion for a lot of students. Um, at the same time, um, I've talked to so many adults who have said, you know, I started on uh, a clarinet or I started on violin or something. And they found that they kind of wish they'd stuck with it now that they're adults. Um, so we would encourage you to be your student's biggest cheerleader. We will certainly be cheerleaders for your students. But when it comes to the time commitment, um, we expect that students are practicing. Um, I'll see my students twice a week. And I think Mr. Schlichting, I guess, will be the same way. Um, but students need, do need to be practicing every day. And, and the best way to do that is to have a setup at home. Um, a room or a space at home where they can, you know, practice, where they can put their instrument um, down, where they can have their music out. Um, having a music stand is a great way to uh, make sure that students have are playing with proper posture. Um, but there's, you know, being being their biggest cheerleader by by helping them um, practice, to reminding them to practice, um, encouraging them, even though um, you know they may not sound like professionals just yet. Um, professionals have to start somewhere, and so we would encourage you to to um, you know, be, be their biggest cheerleader. And um, especially while we're on, you know, on doing our distance learning right now, it can be really difficult to play in front of a computer screen. And so um, no matter what they sound like, good or bad, or you know, if they miss a note, or if it sounds like they don't know what they're doing, um, being there to encourage them and to support them and to um, you know, ask clarifying things. Well, you know, did that sound the way it was supposed to? No, well, maybe we should go email your, your teacher. That's a great way to encourage students um, but also in a, in a positive way. Um, this is, this is going to be challenging, extra challenging when we're not in person and when you don't have everyday in-person feedback with your teachers. Um, we will be available as much as we can uh, throughout the week, but you know, we certainly aren't there and it's not the same. And so they're going to need an extra bit of cheerleading for our, our distance learning students this, this year. And I just wanted to say, uh, I'm excited. I think that there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of positive possibilities with having this time individual time where we can uh, focus on individual students through the screen versus in a class where we've got a small space with 30 bodies, you know, all trying to play at once. So I think actually, I want to spin this in a way that this would be a great time, even if you're on the fence about joining with band or orchestra, to sign up, see if you like it, give it a few months, and check in with us. Yeah, and I would echo that. Um, I'm finding, as I'm planning for our, our band at Olympic View, and as Mr. Schlichting's playing for our orchestra. Um, I'm finding all these new ways of teaching and, and new tricks and things that we can do that I didn't even know we could do that, that being distance learning has forced me to learn as a teacher. And, and I'm excited. And I think there's a lot of great opportunities that even an, you know, in a traditional or normal classroom, um, in that setting, you don't have some of the same opportunities. We have a lot of opportunities now. 
And so we're excited for uh, this. We think that um, we're going to have just as strong musicians this year as we have every year. And we may even find that um, some of the techniques that we're doing online here uh, work you know, even better than what we're doing in the classroom. So we're excited. Um, we, we hope you know, that in, as soon as we can, we can be back in person um, it, it, as long as we can do that safely and um, so that we're all uh, able to, to you know, learn at our best. And so um, we obviously want that to be soon. And of course, when, once we get back in person, then we'll have you know, all of our you know, band students and all of our orchestra students you know, together as, as a full band. And we would even like to give you know, our regular concerts. Uh, we're not sure. We haven't decided exactly how those performances are going to look this year. There will be performances of some sort. And uh, we're really excited about that. And like I said, hopefully that'll be soon. Hopefully we can do that in person. But if, in, if not, um, we still think it's going to be a great year. And um, that just means that next year, the year after, when we can be back in person, then um, those performances will be even more special. Thank you so much for your time. And please feel free to email us for any questions. It's a great way to contact us. Thank you.